Hello everyone, welcome to this very special edition of CBN News Showcase. I'm George Thomas, reporting from Beijing, China. For years, the big story out of this nation has been the economic miracle. But the other untold story, especially in the Western press, has been the explosion of Christianity. And many we have spoken to say prayer has been the key. CBN News traveled to the northeast part of the country where an unusual 24-hour prayer gathering is happening, uniting more than 600 churches, all praying for not just China, but the rest of the world. For years, the Chinese government tried to snuff out Christianity. In the late 1940s, some 500,000 Chinese Christians were killed because of their faith. Now, decades later, in what is officially still an atheist nation, Christianity is now the fastest growing religion. We had a dream that someday we would build a church focused on prayer for China and the world. Ha Bining and her husband Fang Kai are witnesses to this profound move of God across China. In 2000, the Christian couple had a dream to turn this piece of land in a corner of northeast China into a place of prayer. My tears fell like the rain and I started praying. God gave us a vision to help bring churches across China together for non-stop prayer. Nine years later, with construction on the property almost complete, the couple sent out email and text messages to friends and pastors, inviting them for a prayer meeting. We didn't know who would show up or how many. I was praying that at least people from seven churches would show up. To my absolute amazement, 70 churches joined us that day. This is home video of that first prayer meeting. We were overwhelmed at the response. It was totally beyond our expectations. The press center started June 2009. Since then, 617 churches from across China have signed up to pray 24 hours a day. We have three main objectives. First, that this will be a place where people can make peace with each other. Second, that God will use this place for churches to repent and compromise with each other. And third, that this will be a place where people can make peace with God. Christians from more than 100 countries have also visited the prayer center. Every day we receive guests from around the world. It's so exciting to see people pray. These intercessors know God is doing something special in China. When the communists took power in the 1940s, there were roughly 4 million Christians in China. Today, well over 100 million are followers of Jesus Christ. And if current growth rates remain, experts say in less than two decades, China will become the world's most populous Christian nation. In return, Fang Kai says God will use China to be a blessing to the nations. I believe our life as Christians should be a blessing to others. God said to Abraham, I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. God blessed Abraham. He is blessing the Chinese church. Kai and others believe prayer initiatives like this have been key to church growth in China. 24-hour non-stop praying is not an easy task to accomplish, but it is a happy thing for us to do, to enjoy 24 hours of God's presence in prayer. Through prayers, our heart is broadened. We learn to care for others and for the world. As time goes by, prayers inspire us to love each other. In 2011, a new seminary and Christian business school were established on the grounds of the prayer center, training the next generation of pastors and business leaders to change China 
for Jesus Christ. For Ha Binning and her husband Fang Kai, this place is a God-given dream come true, to unite churches in China and help bring news of Christ's love to the ends of the earth. China says it has a huge drug problem. Between 4 million and 14 million are addicts. Well, one group has found an unusual solution to fighting the drug epidemic. In the southwest part of Hunan province, near the border of China and Myanmar, lies a unique drug rehabilitation program that's mixing prayer and Bible study to change the destiny of addicts. We rely only on God, on His mighty power to change lives. Xu Zhengyun helped start the Gospel Rehab Center in 2007. We never use medication or other extreme methods. Instead, we follow a simple routine every day. A routine of prayer. Father, we're submitting in front of you to pray for our brother. We pray that you will use him, help him to stand firm. We pray he can see your mighty power here. Make him realize his mistakes and sins and repent to you for the second chance so that he can gain his second life and be made new through Jesus. Worship. Bible classes. Let's all read together this verse. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Fellowship. And they serve one another. Those who come here for help must see the evidence of Christ's power to heal. We have to be an example so that others can experience God's love. Xu says it's all about creating a safe place for struggling people. The results, he says, speak for themselves. So far, 60% of our addicts have overcame their drug problems. Those who have relapsed end up coming back to the center, and God touches them. We're thankful because we know every success is from him. Zhao Linbin is proof that prayer works. My drug addiction started in 1989, and it continued for 20 years. I was addicted to heroin. I tried to quit, but failed. I even entered a government-run labor correction center, but I never managed to come clean. Gradually, I lost all hope. That changed in 2010 when his mother begged him to try the gospel rehab center. He used to be a very obedient child. He was a good boy, but was led astray. I knew if any place could help him, it was the center, so I pleaded with him to go. Zhao agreed. The center requires that each addict spend at least a year in the program. In the beginning, it was very difficult. I was easily irritated and found myself in continuous conflict with the staff. I refused to listen to their advice, and I would insult them. I didn't want to pray or read the Bible. But the staff wouldn't give up. They kept praying and believing that God would touch him like he touched so many others who had come before him. We are not trained doctors or drug addict specialists. We simply rely on faith and the power of prayer. Zhao says it took some time and eventually he had a revelation of the depth of Christ's love and forgiveness. 20 years of my life has gone, but I never want to return to my old life. I even went to prison, but I know God will restore those years that were wasted. Undoubtedly, God has done a miraculous work on me. Zhao now works as a counselor here. He also loves playing drums during worship. And the miracle continues as he travels and shares his testimony with others of what happens when a life is touched by God. I believe that if I repent sincerely, and accept Jesus as my Savior and Lord, I will be forgiven and welcomed into his kingdom. Now I know that Jesus is the hope of drug abusers. The folks at the Christian Rehab Center are preparing to receive more patients, and here's why. 
New numbers just released from the China National Narcotics Agency. They estimate that there are now in this country close to 14 million drug addicts. Our cameras were there on a recent afternoon when the center opened its doors to a new arrival. In a province known for high drug addiction rates, the Gospel Rehab Center works to make a difference, one life at a time. Our next story may come as a surprise to many of our viewers. There are about 250 licensed Christian bookstores operating today in China, not only bringing the word of God to the masses, but bringing a spirit of encouragement. This is a budding industry, just like the first light of dawn. In the world's most populous nation, there is still a lot of darkness here that is suppressing the light. Technically still communist and officially atheist, we have seen God open the doors, and He wants us to be a light. Comes the story of a mission to reach China's masses with God's Word. God wants us to be like the light of dawn, and as that light grows brighter, the darkness will recede. Joseph Tui is a pioneer of sorts. In 2004, he opened one of China's first legally registered Christian bookstores. Life was very difficult when we first started. The bookstore was practically sustained with money from many secret brothers and sisters in the Lord. Tui says Christian books were scarce and anyone caught with a Bible went to prison. Still, missionaries smuggled Bibles and other Christian literature into the country, putting themselves at great risk. Christians used to come to my bookstore in those early days, asking all kinds of questions like, do you have this book? Do you have that book? Do you have books written by these authors, that author? After hearing several no's, they would say, what kind of bookstore is this? Government attitudes began to shift about 15 years ago when authorities noticed how many Chinese people were turning to Christ. This led to less restrictions on publishing companies. It also gave birth to a small industry of which Xu Qi Xing was excited to join. In 2002, he opened the first Christian bookstore in Shanghai called Stairs to Heaven. When we opened, we only had one book in each section of the shelves, altogether 50 books, each on the shelf with a gift product on either side. <laughs> we would feel so happy when one book was sold out. That same year, Chen Xiaoping opened her shop called Jehovah Nisi in the port city of Xiamen. We knew bookstores could be a very good platform to reach people better than many other places because you get to know people's spiritual needs. Yue Gang also sensed a spiritual opening. He started small in the basement of his house and then in 2002 opened what is officially the first Christian bookstore in Beijing called Stream Bookstore. We got the name from Psalm 1 which says if a tree is planted by the water, its leaf does not wither. Our bookstore is like a tree which can only grow with God's watering and care. We invest a little, but our spiritual returns are many. Since then, Christian bookstores have flourished. There are about 250 licensed Christian bookstores today operating in China, but many of them quickly realized that in order to survive and thrive, they had to change technologically. My mother would ask me, you've been losing money since you started the company. What the heck are you doing? But I knew I had to do it despite the financial risks. In 2008, Wang Shai Pei started the first online Christian bookstore in China. Like the others, starting out wasn't easy, but Wang persevered. I prayed about it for eight months. The more I prayed, the more I was sure of God's guidance. I knew the church and the gospel in China were rapidly changing, so it was the right time for promoting the ministry of the word. Christian bookstores have now become a place of active evangelism and outreach. 
In bookstores, you get to know all kinds of people from different places. You can help people connect with each other, make new friends, and bless each other. We're not in this to make money. We don't have a high input-output ratio, but this is about an investment into the souls of men. Still, Xu and others say the Christian publishing door is not completely open, and significant challenges remain. Two years ago, Chinese authorities dealt a huge blow to Christian bookstore owners, severely restricting the number of Christian titles that could be published each year. It dropped from 200 titles a few years ago to 80 last year. As of this year, the government has only issued 20 titles. The government is worried that giving us more publishing titles could greatly increase the number of Christians and could somehow impact social stability of our country. However, I think the authorities know that the growth of Christianity actually makes our society better and eventually they will change their attitudes. Despite these challenges, Wang and others press on, knowing God is moving in China. And all they have to do is to remain faithful. God will continue to hold us up by His grace and hold us until we complete the great vision. One of the interesting and most unique aspects of the spiritual openness taking place today in China is the slow but emerging Christian music industry. We had a chance to sit down with some of the rising Christian stars. Xu Qi was a rock singer for 20 years. He performed in nightclubs and other venues around China. But the fame and wealth, he says, did nothing to quench the emptiness he felt inside. It took me some time to admit it, but the pleasure was temporary. It did not reach down into my soul. Xu told us how that all changed in a single moment and transformed his singing career. I was reading the Bible and God spoke to me through the verse in Jeremiah 1, verses 7 and 8, which says, Do not say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I'm with you to deliver you. That scripture was like a revelation. Shu says he knew then that the Lord was calling him to do something new with his voice. I realized that my past 20 years as a rock singer wasn't a waste and that God was preparing me to use music to share His love. So instead of playing in nightclubs, he started organizing Christian concerts around the country, something that had never been done before publicly and on such a large scale. When I stepped out of the entertainment business and committed myself to the church and to using music to draw people to Christ, my life status and values changed completely. And the Lord rewarded his obedience. I've been in full-time music ministry for almost three years now. During these three years, around two million people have come forward to accept Christ and my concerts. Yes, two million people. China loves music. In a first-of-its-kind survey released earlier this year, a staggering 977 million people, that's about 75% of China's 1.3 billion population, listen to music regularly. Xu knows he has a captive audience that's open to hearing about God's love. Every time I step on that stage, I feel the responsibility to share the gospel with non-believers and tell them about repentance and forgiveness and share how my broken life was restored and renewed. Xu admits that what he and other Christian musicians are doing to share the gospel in China is huge. This is, after all, an officially atheist country where the government often frowns on Christianity. And while the Christian music industry here pales in comparison to the U.S., Xu believes they are making inroads. Music was created by God, but was stolen and poisoned by the devil. He planted darkness into it and used it to mislead the world. What I'm trying to do is redeem it with a hopeful, positive message that points people to the love of God and touches their soul. And because of his example, more artists now openly proclaim the gospel through song. China has seen an explosion of singing competitions in recent years. Christians, by the way, 
have played a prominent role in several of the national competitions. Among them, Li Wenqi, a finalist in China's televised version of the voice singing competition. As an 18-year-old, she says she understands the pressure many of her peers face in the frantic chase for wealth. Many people today in China believe making money should be their lifelong goal, so they sacrifice everything to chase that dream. But that is fruitless. I try to use my music to encourage people to chase after God instead. Lee's father is also her business manager. He says it's truly remarkable that in China today, his daughter can go on national television and openly sing about Jesus Christ. This would have been unheard of 30 years ago, but now we can sing worship songs freely. I know God will continue to make his voice heard around the nations. Joseph Choi pastors a local church in Beijing. He says professional artists like Li and Xu are introducing his countrymen to a genre of music that is creative, inspiring, and getting people's attention. Christian music is also influencing other religions. If you pay attention to Buddhist music, you find them to be very dull and boring. But nowadays, their songs also become quite cheerful. They adopted the power from Christian music to compose new Buddhist songs. So I think it also shows that Christian music has a wide impact. This is music to Shu's ears. So in between writing new songs and holding Christian concerts, he spends his time trying to get other artists to step out and share the love of Christ. I believe there are a large number of musicians who are afraid, for whatever reason, to openly sing about Christ. I'm praying that more people will be bold so more people can hear about his love. I hope you've enjoyed our look at the growth of Christianity in this great nation. Until next week, from all of us here, goodbye and God bless.